greatest enemies to the civilizing of the West were the white men, who through greed armed the savage Indian tribes. For years, they kept the frontier ablaze with bloody raids, like this attack on an isolated trading post beyond the Pecos. Sooner or later, an outlaw's contempt for the law will make him careless. Following up the Indian raid on one of Matt Carter's trading posts, the Durango kid was closer to a solution of the trouble than he had been in months. At last, there was something definite to go on. The Durango kid's job now was to find out who was posing as an Indian and for what reason. Buckshot, how'd it go? How'd it go? How'd you expect it to go with me handling the deal? Those redskins wiped out that whole trading post. That makes three. <laughs> Let's see. There's two more to go. Why, Matt Carter won't have a dollar to his name inside of a month. <laughs> Dad? What's wrong, Dad? Has something more happened? I haven't got time to tell you now, dear. Look at it. There he goes. He probably just got the news, and he's out trying to raise some money. <laughs> he looks uh, a mite upset. Say, wait a minute, Ace. I didn't tell you the real news. Hmm? You don't have to worry about the Durango kid anymore. What? I just killed him. I spun him off a cliff and make a skyhawk dizzy. <laughs> Buckshot, this is the happiest day of my life. Well, I'm glad you think so, Ace. Have a cigar. Thanks. You know, if the Durango kid had ever found out that I was supplying them Indians with rifles, he'd have torn me apart. Well, now you can step high, wide, and handsome. I don't know about you, Ace, but I'm going to celebrate. And it's on me. Good. That, that's a right nice horse there, ain't it? It sure is. I wonder who owns it. Well, he belongs to Buckshot Thomas. Buckshot Thomas, eh? I don't think I know the gentleman. Well, he ain't no gentleman. He's a kind of a ramrod for Ace Brockway. Ace is the mayor here. That Buckshot's bad medicine. That's so? Tell me, where's the man feet around here? Smiley Burnett's E-Light Restaurant. That's me. The mayor gave me the eating concession in his saloon. 
Well, how come you're running a restaurant? I thought you were a marshal. Oh, that's just kind of a sideline. Sideline? Now, well, the mayor says I got to be the city marshal or I can't have the restaurant concession in there. Why not? Well, I can't figure that out. I got to have two jobs or I don't get any. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> All right, now, now. You don't want to shoot up my place. We're friends, remember? Yeah, pals to the bitter end. That's right. <laughs> now, I tell you what you do. You go on over there and wreck Mike Doyle's saloon. <laughs> you know how I like a good laugh. And you want me to make it real funny, huh? Uh-huh. That's him. Dirty trick, Brockway. <laughs> a trick. Getting Buckshot drunk, then sending him over here to wreck my place. <laughs> yeah, I think that's again the law. Oh. <laughs> well, why did you get Marshal Burnett to stop it? Oh, no, I resigned four shots ago. Oh, you can't resign. Not while I'm here. You're one of the few laughs I get. <laughs> drunk with two six shooters is nothing to laugh at. Well, maybe you'd like to stop it. I think I will. your man, Marshal. Oh, no. You want him, you can have him. Well, Ace, you seem to have a lot of fun around here making Smiley the butt of your jokes. If this fellow's gonna stay a while, make him Smiley's deputy. I don't think it'd be fair to use the taxpayer's money for a deputy, not only have such a neighbor man in Marshal Burnett. I'll pay his wages. Let's see you weasel out of that, Brockway. I don't think he'd like the job. You know, I think I will. Yeah? Well, if anything happens to you, don't blame me. Well, say, does that mean I can hire this fella? Yes, if he wants a job. We can use a fella like you around here, Mr. Uh... Blake. Steve Blake. I'm Matt Carter. That nice, sir. Show him around, Smiley. I sure will. I'll not only show you around, I'll put on a show for you. <laughs> Come on, come on. I'll blast that hombre right out of this town. Matt Carter might wonder about that. You just run him out of town. Make a monkey out of him. Give us all a good laugh. You'll get your laugh. Loves his sleep. Do my snoozing long and deep. Get in my fancy dozing about half past four. Some hungry skunk invented a rig, stands on a dresser and dances a jig and just rings a bell till my feet hits that icy floor. I can be dreaming about anything. I once got as fur as buying a ring. What happened from then on? <laughs> well, who can tell? I'll tell you one I never miss. I can be that far from a juicy kiss and that ornery thing will fairly bust the bell. Oh, that's all, brother, yes, that's all. Time to hit the deck, you hear me call. Last night you set the alarm, now get up or I'll break your arm. That's all, brother, that's all. I'm walking down the avenue, just a window gawking like people do. I see a sign that says, free excursion train. At 6 a.m. she's due to arrive, so I set the alarm for quarter to five. Spent the evening in a friendly poker game. Well, I turned in early, started counting sheep, counted a dozen, then I went to sleep, thinking about this free trip all the time. All at once.
once I opens my face, the morning sun's all over the place, and that pesky rig says 25 minutes to nine. <laughs> oh, that's all, brother. Yes, that's all. Well, I tried to wake you up. I tried to call. Now you're the stupid mug that forgot to pull the plug. That's all, brother. That's all. That's all, brother. That's all. That's all, brother. Pardon me. I'm Jim Trainer, editor of the Pecos Fast Beacon. Howdy. Steve Blake's the name. Sit down. Thanks. You know, you've stepped into a first-class feud. Brock Lane Carter? Mm-hmm. What are they feuding about? Everything. They both want to control the Pecos Flats and the range west of the river. And uh, Carter's in the saddle, eh? Well, he was, till they started publishing the beacon to control local politics. And the Indians started wiping out Carter's trading posts. I see. Might be a connection with that. Well, Carter thinks Ace is behind the gun running. And Brockway? He says Carter sold those guns to the Indians himself. Tell me, uh, where'd Brockway come from? Nobody knows. He hit town with a deck of cards and a hundred dollars. And he's already run them into plenty. I guess we better get better acquainted. <laughs> you will. You won't like being forced to appoint you Smiley's deputy. Why not? Oh, his first act as mayor was to have Smiley made town marshal, just for laughs. He doesn't want law and order around here. He wants a wide open town. And, uh, you work for his paper? Well, I take his money, and I write what he tells me. But that's as far as it goes. Your napkin? Thanks. Get up. Get his gun belt, trainer. Now stand over there. Wow, what's the matter, Buckshot? You and the new deputy having a little trouble? No, I'm just going to play with him a little bit before I run him out of town. Hey, Burnett. Yes, sir. Bring this guy's grub. Yes, sir. A whole turkey? Well, that's too good for that saddle tramp. I think I'll eat it myself. So tear off one of those legs and start feeding me. Get his gun, Trina. What are you doing? Now, you start feeding me. I like to start with the wing first. Here's a list of my losses to date. Hmm. Strikes me most men would have given up and quit by now. Oh, I can't do that. All these small ranches and settlers are dependent upon me and my trading post for their supplies. That's why I dropped around to see you, Mr. Carter. There's talk in town that you have a supply train scheduled to leave Santa Fe in a day or two. Tomorrow, to be exact. Tell me, why can't you telegraph instructions and have it held up a few weeks? By then, a United States regiment will be moving to Fort Bush, and they can escort your wagons. Oh, I'd like to, Steve, but I can't do that. You see, our supplies are pretty low as it is. Oh, hello, dear. Steve, I want you to meet my daughter, Lola. How do nice you do? Nice to meet you. Mr. Blake is the new deputy marshal I was telling you about. Oh, I see. Dad, I was just talking to Jim Trainer, and he would like... The less you see of that cow town, Horace Greeley, the better it'll suit me. But, Dad, he's never done you any harm, and besides, he wants your story on the last trading post. You tell him to get his story from Brockway. He only prints what Ace tells him to print anyway. But that doesn't mean he isn't our friend. Dad, I think Jim would like to help us if you would let him. I agree with Miss Lola. Trainer strikes me as being a pretty good boy. Well, it looks like I'm outnumbered. All right, 
I'll see him. Oh, thanks, Dad. There's another reason I can't give up, Steve. Also a good reason why you shouldn't take too many chances. I know what you mean. But that wagon train's got to leave Santa Fe tomorrow. You fellas enjoyed your meal, I hope. That stew tasted like the same stew you had yesterday. It was. Before I serve you dessert, I want to show you a good trick a magician feller did on the stage down in El Paso. I'm going to pull that tablecloth off of there without messing up any one of them three glasses. For every glass you break, I'm going to charge you a dollar. Oh, there's nothing to the trick. See, nothing up my sleeves, nothing in my pocket. Nothing in your head. <laughs> See? Hurry up and get that grub. As soon as we've eaten, we've got to pay Chief Bearclaw another visit. What for? Matt Carter's wagon train leaves Santa Fe on schedule tomorrow. When the settlers don't get the supplies they're expecting, there won't be much else to keep them in this territory. That's when you move in, huh? Mm -hmm. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. How many? I owe you $68. And you'll pay it. <laughs> this Santa Fe, this Pecos River, this Pecos Flats, Bear Claw Savvy? Me no. When wagon train reach here, you strike. You savvy? Me no. Kill men, kill horses, burn wagons. You savvy? Me no. How much rifle? Bear Claw want 100 rifle. Well, that's a lot of rifles. Bearclaw want 100 rifle. You sabi, Buckway? Buckway, sabi. You get rifles. The old chief's getting smart, Ace. Those 100 rifles are gonna cost you plenty. Yeah, but not as much as it would've cost if Matt Carter's wagon train had got through. Last night. Indians? Yeah. Where did it happen? Out on Cactus Mesa. You know what tribe it was? I couldn't tell, Matt. Indians are Indians at night. All right. 
there's the bar. Go on and have some fun. It's all on the house. Red, give us a little tune, huh? Going back, going back, going back to Texas, going back. Texas going back today Take my boots and saddle And ride the range all day Going back to Texas Going back today Gonna get my darling When I get down that way Going back to Texas Going back to stay In that little prairie cow town Where the girls all swing and sway Going back to Texas Yes, I'm on my way Gonna find my darling when I get my pay going back to Texas going back to stay in that little prairie cow town where the girls all swing and sway going back Texas. Yes, I'm on my way. Gonna find my darling when I get my pay. You know, there's one thing about the old chief. He always does a good job. Yeah. We can count on him just as long as we give him the rifles we promised him. You gonna give him that hundred you bargained for? Why, sure. I need his Indians now more than ever. With their help, I can move in on the land that Matt Carter is now holding. You can't hold on to that territory with just Indians. Well, I don't intend to use just Indians. As mayor of Pecos Flats and a prominent newspaper publisher, I've already appealed to Washington for troops. You mean you want a bunch of soldiers running all over the place? The army, my none too bright friend, will force Bear Claw up north into Indian territory after he's wiped out Matt Carter. Then everything west of the Pecos will be mine. Ace, you've got a smart head on your shoulders. Yeah. And I intend to keep some hair on it. Now, about those rifles. You better have Curly Niles make the delivery. Well, a hundred rifles is a pretty heavy pull over Red Rock Pass. I know it. You tell them to go by way of Canyon Diora. We'll ship the rifles by stagecoach. Chuck and Whitey will be driving that day, and we'll make sure there are no other passengers. I'm here because I figure you can be trusted. Just because I work for Ace Brockway doesn't mean I think like him. That's what I figured. Tell me, would you recognize this glove if you ever saw it again? 
I'm sure I would. Good. Next time you see it, identify it as Durango's. I will. You can't hit that milk pitcher. <laughs> well, here's your 20. It was worth it. That's all, brother. That done it. If Matt Carter wants his lunch, he can cook it over a match. I'm not gonna be a target for nobody, no time, no day! Say, uh, Curly ought to be getting back for making that delivery pretty soon, hadn't he? But... What's he doing driving that coach? I don't know, but we'll find out. And let me do the talking. Hey, Jim. Got a story here for you. Take a look. It's Curly Niles. Is that who it is? Is he hurt bad? He's dead. <laughs> Where'd you come across him? Found him in the stage, about a mile out of town. Is that all? There was no drivers, uh, nothing else inside the stage? Nope. You don't suppose that some Indian party could have... Indians don't kill a man, then leave his gun on him, Ace. Yeah, that's right. Well, Deputy, you take him over to Doc Summers. Have him fix him up at the fine funeral. Sure. What do you suppose happened? Oh, shut up. I'm trying to think. Hey, look at this. What's this? Only one man I know wears a glove with a D on it like that. Who's that? The Durango Kid. Oh, you're crazy. The Durango Kid's dead. If he is, I've got a whale of a story, but that glove makes me think he's very much alive. All right, Trandy, you can go back to your work and keep your mouth shut about this. So the Durango kid is dead, huh? You killed him. Yes, I did kill him. When I shoot a man, he's dead. Well, then who killed Curly Niles? What became of them rifles? And how do you account for this glove? It's a trick, Ace. Nobody in this town would dare play a trick on Ace Brockway. One man would. Huh? Matt Carter. Yeah. Yes, he would. And Jim Trainer's in on it. Well, how do you figure that? Well, Trainer's a tenderfoot. What could he know about the Durango kid? Only what he's heard, probably. Well, then how could he identify this glove as Durango's if somebody hadn't put him up to it? You're right, Ace. We gotta do something about Trainer. Mm, that's asking for trouble. Trainer's mighty well liked around here, you know. Don't worry. I'll get Gunsmoke Ballard to handle it. Mother Nature made the pumpkin on the ground. Mother Nature made the pumpkin on the ground. If she'd have made it twice as big, made a fine house for a pig, it ain't much help, no, it ain't much help. Mother Nature made the high grass in the field. Mother Nature made the high grass in the field. If she'd have made it fat and sweet, I know right where I would eat. Ain't much help, it ain't much help. Ain't much help, no, no, can't do no good, no, no. Got to work and work and slave for all you can. Plenty of everything laying around, just waiting to be found. Ain't much help, no, no, ain't much help. Mother Nature made the mighty wind blow. Mother Nature made the mighty wind blow. All that blowing ain't worth a whoop, piles up dirt all over the stoop. Ain't much help, it ain't much help. Mother Nature made the cloud, made the rain. Mother Nature made the cloud, made the rain. Long as she can make a rain, why don't she wash this winter pane? Ain't much help, it ain't much help. Ain't
much help, no, no, can't do no good, no, no, got to work and work and slave for all you get. Plenty of everything laying around, just waiting to be found, ain't much help, no, no, ain't much help. Don't turn around. No, sir. Reach for it and do a good job. Yes, sir. Go on, jump. Uh, yes, sir. Now the next one. Yes, sir. Come on, jump. Yes, sir. All right, once more. Yes, sir. Once more. Uh... <laughs> Ain't I got enough trouble without you fellas badgering me? Well, at least I got the windows clean. You're sure that's Smiley, with Steve's help. Uh, you can give me some help getting out of this pail now. <laughs> Smiley, this is no place to take a bath. Well, help me. It's not Saturday, it's not night, and it's not decent. <laughs> help me. Here, yeah, wait a minute. Let me get this in there. I'll kick. Help. Get me out of here. Jumping, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> get me out of here. Help. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. I don't seem to recall that face. Are you in there? Yes, I'm in here. Get me out. All right, I'll help you. <laughs> Why, you lame, bang, piece of coyote bed, I ought... Look, look out, you can't hurt me. I got King's X. Why, you... Honest, it won't happen again, mister. Well, it better not happen again. Goodbye, Mr. Gunsmoke. What'd you say? That's Gunsmoke Ballard. He's a mean hombre to get mixed up with. You know, folks say he'll shoot a man for $50, and for $100, he'd shoot himself. Ballard. What's up, Steve? Get out of the light, Jim. me, Blake. I'm through. Here's my gun. There are two gunmen, Ballard. Throw the other out. I'll bring it to you, you two-bit deputy. $20,000 is a pretty fair price, Mr. Jason. I'll have my men make delivery of the capital immediately. Fine. Oh, just in time, Steve. Come in. Meet Mr. Jason. He's purchasing agent for the Army. Glad to know you, Mr. Jason. How do you do? You know, it was Steve's idea that I contact the Army in the first place. When Colonel Watkins heard about Mr. Carter's cattle, he authorized me to purchase them immediately. Well, that doesn't make us unhappy. Well, I'll make payment now and be on my way. Hello. This means Dad can finance another supply train and save the settlements. And Mr. Jason says Colonel Watkins will send a cavalry escort with the wagons. You don't look too happy about it, Steve. I can be wrong, but... But what? Oh, nothing. I just hope news doesn't leak out about this deal. 
Well, I'll be busy up at the ranch for a few days, so if you... Oh, I'll be all right, Dad. Jim will... Well, I mean, well, there's nothing to worry about, really. Well, if anything goes wrong, you can put a help-wanted ad in his newspaper. <laughs> Come back in long, boy. Bye, Dad. Now, well, there goes Carter. Tell Trainer I want to see him in my office right away. My job is to print news, Ace, not to betray confidences. In my opinion, when an army purchasing agent pays a call on Matt Carter, that's news. Now, you were there. What was the deal? I'm not at liberty to reveal it. Oh, so there was a deal. I didn't say that. Trainer, I'm paying you to run my newspaper. But if I ever find out that you're withholding news that might be of interest to the people of this town... This news, I'll print it, not before. Trainer! You better think it over. And think it over right. The Durango kid was waiting for Jim when he got back from Brockway's. What he wanted Jim to do had to be done quickly. And Durango knew it wasn't going to be easy to make Jim see it his way. In time, Brockway could find out the details of Matt Carter's cattle deal. That information would soon be open to anyone at the Army post. It was up to the Durango kid to convince Jim Trainer that he could help Carter the most by printing the story himself. Especially certain details about the money Mr. Jason had turned over in payment for the cattle. Oh, good morning, Mr. Brockaway. What's good about it? Well, one thing it's good about it, I got the $68 I owe you. Well, where did you get $68? It was easy. I bet old Red Arnold that I could do that glass trick again. You mean you tried it again? Sure, look. Now I only owe you $65. Three of them didn't even break. Well, you clean up that mess. And Red, go on, play a little music. Will you yourself all dead around here? Play the music, boys. <laughs> Get a line log, get a pole, hun. You get a line log, get a pole, babe. You get a line log, get a pole. We'll, we'll go down to the crawdad that hole, honey, baby mine. Heard the duck say to the drake, hun. Heard the duck say to the drake, babe. I heard the duck say to the drake, ain't no crawdads in this lake, honey, baby mine. Sat on the bank till my feet got cold, hun. Sit on the bank till my feet got cold, babe. Sit on the bank till my feet got cold. Looking down that crawl, that hole, honey, baby mine. Wake up, Sue, you slept too late, hun. Wake up, Sue, you slept too late, babe. Wake up, Sue, you slept too late. Crawl that man done past your gate, honey, baby mine. What you gonna do when the pond goes dry, hun? What you gonna do when the pond goes dry, babe? What you gonna do when the pond goes dry? Sit on the bank and watch crawdads die, honey, baby mine. Caught a crawdad three foot long. How long? Well, I caught a crawdad two foot long. How long? Well, I caught a crawdad one inch long. And that's the end of the crawdad song, honey, baby mine. I like that. I like that. Holy smoke! Steve? Golly, where have you been? I was afraid it happened before you even got here. Afraid what would happen? Read that. Trainer ought to have his head examined for printing information like that about Mr. Carter. Sale of 500 head of cattle to the Army will enable Matt Carter to go ahead with his plans for the Val... No, 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 no. R -r Read there. Oh. Right here? Yeah. However, there's no question that Mr. Carter was a very happy man as he put the $20,000 in his safe. Well, what's wrong with that? 
What's wrong with that? Why, every crook west of Pecos will be after that money. That's what's wrong with that. Oh, stop worrying, Marshal. You'll be around to protect it. Oh, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you came to see it my way, trainer. That's good newspaper work. Is that all? Yeah, sure, you can go now. I just want you to know I appreciate a good job. Say, you know, trainer's scared a lot easier than I thought he would. Oh, no, he's just getting smart. With everybody in town knowing about this, anybody get very responsible for what's going to happen. What about Steve Blake? Supposing he decides to keep an eye on that safe. Yeah, we better get him out of town. Send for Sleepy Larson. What can he do? Well, Sleepy can take Steve a message. A message that'll take him out to the Carter Ranch tonight. I wouldn't be too harsh on Jim Trainer. Maybe he had good reason to print that story. Well, I never want to see him again. And when Dad finds out what he's done, there's... Hold on. Don't worry, Jim. Maybe she'll feel differently about it after tonight. What do you mean? I think I know why you printed that story. Are you Steve Blake? That's right. I'm from the Carter Ranch. Uh, Matt told me to give you this. What's the trouble at the ranch? Some gunslingers are trying to keep them from rounding up the cattle for the army. And I got winged and came in to see the doc. Well, you better go see him right away. I'll yeah. hurry out there. Say, does Carter usually print things out like this? I don't think so. I've seen him write a very fine hand. <laughs> Say, you won't get to the ranch before dark if you don't start right away. Yeah, you're right. Come on, Sock. Well, I see you're right on the job. Yes, sir. -y. There ain't gonna be no suspicious characters around as long as I'm here. Oh, speaking of suspicious characters, you know, I think I saw one prowling around the other end of town a while ago. You did? Yeah. I think maybe you better get down there and investigate. You do? Uh, I think you'd better. Kid is dead, is he? Not as dead as you'll be if you try anything. What's your game, Durango? To put an end to yours. As mayor of this town, you're going to have a tough time explaining why you're interested in Matt Carter's safe. Those taxpayers will be here any minute. Grab some air, you masked hombre. I got you red handed. Nice work, Marshal. And don't try any funny tricks. I got a hair trigger on this smokestack and enough powder in it to blow you to kingdom come. After him, boys! Yeah, after him! Don't let him get away!
to your horses and after them. gave us a slip. No one ever saw him again. Say, do you think he's got the money? Not unless he knew the combination of that safe. It's my guess that Trainer tricked us with that newspaper story. Well, part of the story was true. Carter's men have already started moving the cattle to Fort Bush. Suppose the Army never got delivery on them beefs. Suppose Chief Bearclaw's Indians raided that herd before it ever gets there. You're all washed up with Chief Bearclaw, you know. You never got those hundred rifles like you promised, remember? Yeah, but the chief will feel a lot better about it when I hand over 500 head of prime cattle. Let's get out of here, Buckshot. We gotta be in Indian country by sunup. Anene, Durango. Good ahene. Durango followed trail of many cattle to this place. Two days, many soldiers follow same trail. Cattle belong to soldier. Buckway tell Bear Claw his cattle. Buckway talk with two tongues. Buckway send hundred rifles he promised. No, not rifle. Send cattle. Cattle trap for Bear Claw to make war on soldiers. Brockway no friend to Indians. Durango friend. Durango friend to all Indians. Then Durango say to Bear Claw, he must hold wise counsel with his braves. Make peace with soldiers. Give them back on cattle. Bear Claw speak at campfire council. What's the matter with you? Where you been since yesterday? Fort Bush, and I was lucky to get away from there. Ace, Chief Bearclaw's given you the double cross. What? He turned every one of those cattle over to the army. If this is your idea of a jump, I'm telling I... you the truth. You and me are so close to hang, I can feel the rope burns on my neck. Keep talking. Bearclaw turned good Indian. 
told Colonel Watkins the whole deal about the rifles, the raids on the trading posts, the wagon trains, everything. I suppose that's something to smile at. I was just thinking. I hit this town with a deck of cards and a hundred dollars. I did pretty good for myself. Starting up in a new territory with twenty thousand dollars figures to be just two hundred times easier. There's still Indians in the West, and Indians will still do anything for rifles. And the further west we get, the less chance the army will have to mess up our plans. Buckshot, we've got to get our hands on Carter's $20,000 before we leave this town. Lola, if you'd only let me explain... There's nothing you can say that would make any difference. Supposing I were to tell you your father's money hasn't been stolen at all. I've been carrying it ever since the Durango kid gave it to me. He told me when the cattle were delivered to return it to you or your father. Hide it, quick! Pull the blinds. I want to talk to you two. I think you know what I'm after. You're wasting your time, Ace. There's nothing in this office you could want. Oh, no? Where's that money? I don't know. You don't, huh? Well, nobody's gonna leave this office alive until I find out. You're barking up the wrong tree, Ace. The Durango kid took that money. And I've got a pretty good idea that you know what he did with it. Soften him up. Oh, please stop. You're killing him. I know where the money is. Mola, don't tell him. Shut up, please. Here. Come on, Buckshot. Let's clear out of here. We got it. Wait a minute, Ace. You're not going to leave those two here alive, are you? You take care of them. All right, Marshal. They're both yours. Well, at last I've got you. Right where I want you. And as the Marshal of this town, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> 